I say the banksters, they come in all shapes, colors, and nationalities. Um, firstly, I would like to thank GUENGL uh, for inviting me here today. I would also like to thank them for producing this booklet, which not only tells my story, it also refers to the legislation I resigned over and puts my story in the context of other um, European banks operating out of Dublin. Um, I was the risk manager for Unicredito Italiano Dublin's operation in 2007. Unicredit is the biggest bank in Italy. It owns Bank Ostia Credit Anstalt. It also owns Bayerische Hupo and Vereinsbank HVB. We are talking about a very large bank. My crime, my only crime, was to comply with Irish law. I walked broad daylight, walked down to the regulator's office, the Central, Central Bank of Ireland, and said, I am breaking the law. I am signing for billions that do not exist. In Ireland, there's an expression that says, no, no good deed goes unpunished. I was punished severely. I have not been able to work for nine years. I would also like this to take this occasion to thank the people, people in real life, people on Twitter, people in America, people in Australia, who've helped me to keep going, who've on more than one occasion put a roof above my head and provided me with food. Because there is a law, there is a lot of discussion, but there is nothing being done, absolutely nothing in practical terms. I resigned nine years ago. During the nine years that I resigned, statements were made, for example, by the CEO of Deutsche Bank, Josef Ackermann, who said, the liquidity problems of Dublin-based Debfa Bank last September brought the entire German banking system to within a hair's breadth of collapse. That is on page nine in the booklet. Has Mr. Ackermann been summoned to the EU Parliament to be asked how come a bank in Dublin almost collapsed the entire German system, banking system? Has he been asked that in any forum that we know of? Which bank is he even referring to? Does anybody here know? It's a very old German bank. Exists for 250 years. Deutsche Pfandrich Bank. Did anybody know that this was the biggest bank in Ireland in the last 10 years? Why do people not know this? Why are people so intimidated? I'll tell you why because they get threatened, like I did. In writing, by Unicredit's lawyers, verbally, on more than one occasion, and threatened by utter silence. All three biggest political parties in Ireland know of my story. I met with um, among others, Richard Bruton, who is a minister in the current government. He responded, we met at my solicitor's office in Dublin. He responded by saying that he would be in touch with the regulator. Nothing was heard from him ever again. Michael Noonan, the current minister of finance in Ireland, later stated that Fine Gael had never heard of me. Although there are minutes of a meeting between me and Richard Bruton at a solicitor's firm. Joan Burton, who later became Deputy Prime Minister of Ireland, met me in person, raised my issue in the Irish Parliament, but never said a word once she came to power. So the silence is what is working against us. The lack of cooperation is also working against us. Mr. Molindo earlier referred to um, LGT Bank. How many people here today know what happened of LGT Bank in Germany? 
How many people among the Dutch people know that after you bailed out a failed bank called ABN AMRO, it went on to buy LGT Bank belonging to the Duke of Liechtenstein in Bavaria? So a bailed out Dutch bank goes and buys a private bank in Bavaria? How many people in Holland know about this? Why? Do you not have a media? Do you not have a parliament? Well, it tells quite a lot that I was interviewed. My first television interview was by Australian television, Australian ABC, Australian state television, came all the way to Dublin to interview me. The Central Bank of Ireland refused, and I saw the refusal with my own eyes, in writing, the Central Bank of Ireland refused to go on record. It might have something to do with the fact that the chairman of my bank in Ireland, after this happened, after I reported a breach of billions, was appointed as a director to the Central Bank of Ireland. His letter of appointment to the Central Bank of Ireland appears in this booklet. You are welcome to see it with your own eyes, how a chairman of a bank, page 47, was then appointed to the regulating body. So how much truth are we going to have? The citizens of Ireland have been going through unbelievable austerity in the last decade for bailing out a bank called Anglo-Irish Bank. Most people in Ireland never had anything to do with Anglo-Irish Bank. In the same way that most people in Ireland, and probably Germany, had never heard of Deutsche Pfandrief Bank, which Josef Ackermann was referring to. Now, if you take a glance at who were the bondholders of Anglo-Irish Bank, this is on page 54, you will see some quite well-known names like Allianz Global Investors, I'm sure you're familiar with that name, Barclays Wealth Management, BBVA Asset Management, BNP Paribas, um, EFG Bank, EFG, associated to Mr. Latsis of Greece, um, Rothschild, um, and here we have KBC. We're in Belgium. I'm sure you're well aware, well aware of KBC. I made a reference to KBC when I was interviewed on Belgian state television, and I referred to the terms on, and conditions with which KBC Ireland gave me upwards of 700,000 euro, and I will repeat it today. It was Mickey Mouse banking. Rudi Franks, who presented the program on VLT television, rang me the next day. You know, KBC is very angry. How can we say this? I said, you're in KBC in Dublin and asked to see the phones, which I signed. And it is Mickey Mouse. But as long as the balance sheets were growing back here in Belgium, as long as the bonuses were being paid out for so-called success in Ireland, there were no questions asked. Going back to my case, and again, it's a question of silence, it's a question of law. My issue was first raised on the 23rd of February in the Irish Senate by Senator David Norris. He asked Finance Minister Brian Lenehan for answers surrounding, for answers about the events that brought to my resignation from Unicredit in Ireland. In his response, Brian Lenehan, Minister of Finance for Ireland, said that the uh, Central Bank of Ireland cooperates with, uh, sorry, this is in Appendix E for those of you who are brave enough to go that far. Um, Central Bank of Ireland cooperates with other central banks throughout the European 
uh, this is what he actually said. The financial regulator maintains close communication with the regulators of other member states for this purpose. Credit institutions are obliged to report weekly to the financial regulator on their liquidity requirements. All, all credit institutions are also obliged to be in compliance with the requirements on an ongoing basis. That means every minute of the day. That means you don't fall f billions of euros short. Just like that. But the question is, when Brian Lenehan said the Central Bank of Ireland is cooperating, can anybody confirm that the Central Bank of Ireland actually informed Banca d'Italia, the Central Bank of Italy, that the biggest bank in Italy had a petulant child in Ireland that didn't know much, how much money it has? Now, it's very simple. All you have to do is ask Unicredit H quarters in Milano or ask the governor of Banca d'Italia about did he know what his child in Ireland was doing. The governor of Banca d'Italia at that time was a Mr. Mario Draghi. I'm sure Mario Draghi can be found and asked. Likewise, Anglo-Irish had a subsidiary in Vienna. Anglo-Irish collapsed. The subsidiary in Vienna was sold to a private Swiss family just before its collapse. That bank has been renamed twice. It's now called Wiener Privat Bank. There is a lot of cooperation that is required. There is much to be done. There is no point in making more laws if the ones that exist are not enforced. Thank you very much. Jonathan, as you know, we meet Mario Draghi from time to time, and uh, I think we are very happy to ask him a few questions. If you I help, look forward to that. If you, if you help us with that. With the greatest of pleasure. Um, I think it's also important that we uh, never forget the personal history. I just say that it would also help if the central bank, it would, all, it would also, it would also help um, as we prepare for these questions for Mr. Draghi, for the Central Bank of Ireland to actually come clean about what it knew and didn't know and what it did or didn't do. Because going back, and this was mentioned earlier about state prosecution, when I did meet with the Central Bank of Ireland, A, I was forbidden to record our own meeting. I'm the one who came to do the talking. I was not allowed to record my own voice. Secondly, the Central Bank threatened to hand me over to the prosecutor not the bank for committing a crime, but me for telling the bank about the crime, telling the central bank about the crime. 